Hello everybody, uh, thanks for tuning in and just want to start off by saying if you want to help to start meeting your goals consistently, um, co coaching is a great tool, the accountability is phenomenal. I've had clients that said they've been trying to accomplish goals for years, even decades, and when they got a coach, uh, everything completely changed because they now had the accountability and they had someone to help map out their goals and uh, monitor their progress. So don't let your ego um, stand in the way of making progress in your life and, and improving the quality of your life, your relationships, your health. You know, if you want to lose weight, exercise, anything. There's just so there's just so many benefits of uh, having someone hold you accountable and working with you and supporting you. Um, so if you're interested in coaching, my email address is in the description. Uh, send me an email. The first session consultation is free and the second one is um, only $5 and it's very affordable after that. Um, eventually I will have to raise my prices uh, because the, it, it is pretty low but I'm really passionate uh, about helping people uh, realize their goals and bring inner peace into their life. Today's topic is keeping your word. It's amazing how lightly we keep, we uh, treat our word. It is so easy to give our word, but yet so hard to follow through. So we want to start having a new approach in regards to our word. One of the fundamental problems or challenges that I have to work with clients in the beginning is get getting them to really honor their word and treating their word as their bond. There is nothing more important in this world than you keeping your word to yourself and keeping your word to other people. That is the, the foundation or the basis of self-discipline and significantly transforming your life. How often do we say we're going to do things and we don't follow through? We don't complete it. It's just amazing how lightly people treat their word. And what happens is it slowly erodes your self-confidence. It erodes your belief in yourself. It erodes other people's confidence in you. They don't take you seriously. You don't take yourself seriously. And so whether you have health goals, financial goals, relationship goals, career goals, if you're not honoring and keeping your word vigilantly, vigilantly you're just you say something and it's good is done if you're not doing that you are sacrificing your future and you are sacrificing your present because you're just you end up taking the path of least resistance but when we give our word and when we honor it there is so much self-esteem that comes from honoring our word we feel so good about ourselves and I'm talking. I'm not only talking about the big things. The little things count as well. Honoring your word. Um, in the Four Agreements, it talks about being impeccable with your word. Well, part of that impeccability is doing what you say you're going to do. It's such a simple concept, but how many people do you know that actually follow that? It's it's few and far between. But the people that do follow through with that, I have so much respect. Uh, for them. And simple things like you say you're going to be somewhere at a certain time, that that's what you do. You say you're going to be there at 6 p.m. You're there 6 p.m. In fact, even five minutes uh, earlier. And you're prepared without all the excuses and nonsense uh, and BS that we tell ourselves and that we tell other people on reasons why we can't honor our word. Now, it's been such a conditioned habit, and it's so accepted in society not to honor your word that we don't even think it's, it's like not even become socially unacceptable anymore. When people don't honor the word, it's become the norm. And what a tragedy that is. And then we want to be an example for if, we have, if you have kids or if you're in relationships, you want to set the example. You start honoring your word, your word, the, your circle, your circle of friends. Um, your your children and your relationships, your significant other, they start, it's, it's just contagious. They say, wow, you know, this, this guy or this woman says she's going to do something and it happens. I, and it just, it shocks me even like businesses, how many businesses, um, you know, you call someone up to do some work on your home or you call so, someone up 
um, you know, to set an appointment and they're late or they don't show up or, or whatever, or they say they're going to complete it on this given period and it doesn't happen, it, it really just is, is devastating. It's devastating not honoring your word. Um, so how do we go about honoring our word? Well, one thing is to keep in mind the two parts of our brain. There's like a future self and present self. And I've been reading in some uh, psychology books that we should actually treat ourselves like two different beings. The present self is the part of our brain that likes immediate gratification. The path of least resistance is more primitive, if you want to call it the, like the old brain, where, it t where it's concerned about, you know, food, shelter, sex, uh, and, and just in general, safety, and in general, pleasure. And so if something's uncomfortable or requires sacrifice or self-discipline, generally it's going to avoid that unless it involves immediate gratification. And that's what we tend to succumb to. That tends to be our master, that, the, that, that monkey part of our brain. And then we have the other part of our brain, which is like the future self is able to plan for goals, is able to save money, is able to see the bigger picture, is able to delay gratif uh, gratification. And that part of our brain um, is, is in, con as you know, we can all relate to this, is in constant battle um, with the monkey part of our brain, the primitive part of our brain. So you have like old brain and new brain. And um, this even activates different parts of our brain. When we start to think of our present self versus our future self, it activates a different part of our brain. And the way, the, what causes us to get in so much trouble on not keeping our word is future self or the like, let's call it the new brain, the part that's more disciplined and can see the, the, the future, plan for the future, and present self, they don't work together. And so the present self will say, uh, exercise, you know, four times a week for an hour and a half or two hours. Yeah, I'll do that. Or you ever have the experience of you commit going to an event or meeting a friend or going to a party or something, uh, and present self says, yes, I'll do that. And then when future self comes, it says, oh my gosh, I don't want to do that. You know, that's not something uh, you regret making that commitment so you don't follow through with your word. So the key is, instead of looking to, when you make a commitment or promise, instead of looking to the future, look to the past. Look at your history. Look, if you want to start a new exercise routine, look at your history in the past when you've tried to start an exercise routine or what you're currently doing as an exercise routine. So when I'm, co when I'm working with clients and I'm coaching them and they'll say, well, I want to lose weight or I want to start exercising. And, I'll say, and they'll tell me I want to start exercising, you know, an hour and a half, like I said earlier, four times a week. And I'll say, well, how much are you doing now? And they'll say, well, I'm not really exercising. I'm only exercising inconsistently. I say, well, let's, let's stop here because that's a, a case of present self over-promising what future self can deliver. And so we need to just start it slow and build the habit slow and steady. So even starting something with five minutes, three times a week of exercise, going for just a short walk, that is the beginning of building a habit and honoring your word to yourself. When you say, when you set that goal too high, you are setting yourself up for failure and disappointment. And I tell clients, you just give me five minutes. If you can commit something and follow through with what you say you're gonna do, we can do wonders. We can do miracles with that because it's developing and strengthening that self-discipline muscle and we can slowly increase it and then it starts expanding. Self-discipline is you know, contagious. When you start doing it in one area, it starts to affect other areas. But the key thing is keep your word. That's it. Keep your word. But by starting small and then slowly increment, uh, incrementally uh, increase the duration or the quantity. We have this need for immediate gratification. And if it's not, the gratification and uh, satisfaction is, and results are not immediate, then we tend to give up. And 
we lack the patience to, to think of the tortoise and the hare. You want to be the tortoise. You want to be the turtle. You want to have the patience to finish the race. And there's, it's no good to be the hare, to be the rabbit, and just storm out of the gate, and you're so far in the lead, and eventually you burn yourself out. What, that's a real common pattern for New Year's resolutions. People set all these New Year's resolutions that they have no, they have no training for. And they just go for two weeks, one week, three weeks, and then everything fizzles out. Instead of you know, starting your news, New Year's resolutions in December and creating that momentum so when January comes, you're dialed in. You're following your news, your New Year's resolutions. You started slowly. You didn't add too many goals. And you've created that confidence and that belief in yourself that you are a person that, fought, that follows through with what they say, say they're going to do. I can't tell you that just the joy and confidence and satisfaction looking in the mirror at a person who honors their word. Honor your word. And the, so the second part of keeping our word is learning how to say no. So many of us are people pleasers and have this inability to tell people no. And we promise things that we have no intention of delivering, or the, the intention of delivering is 50-50. And that comes from that, that need for approval, external approval. So when you start working on yourself, when you start building your confidence, when you start taking a holistic approach to your life, it, these things start transforming and you start feeling good about yourself and you don't need that external approval or validation for someone to say, oh, you know, you could say, for example, you could say no without needing to give an excuse. Hey, would you like to go to um, uh, a party on Friday night? Uh, no, thank you. Woo, that's it. Period. No, thank you. No excuse. Why do we need to give them excuse? Now, if they ask, okay, we can, we can tell them the reason why. But there's no reason. We don't owe people excuses if they invite us. And we could say, thank you very much. I really appreciate the invitation. But um, no, I'm, I'm not interested in going. Even saying that probably makes some people uncomfortable. And so even if that is too much of a challenge with you, start small. You know, start small with the little things. Um, you know, one of the things when you see people, you like you bump into them at the store somewhere, and they say, oh, we should get together. I'll give you a call. And they never call. That's an example of not honoring your word. Um, paying your bills on time is honoring your word. Um, honoring your word to, to your children. Just in all situations, we want to be known as the man or woman who does what they say they're going to do. And learning how to say no is one, is one of the keys uh, in doing that. And, and it just feels so good. So thanks, thanks guys, for, for watching. Uh, thanks for your comments and your subscriptions. And, and again, um, if you want to give coaching a try, uh, shoot me an email and we'll set up the, the free consultation. And you'll get to experience uh, firsthand the benefits and the results of, of having someone who studies this stuff and uh, working with you to improve all areas of your life and creating that balance that we all need. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic week. Bye-bye.